What a time to be alive, guys. What a time. Good morning. So, yes, anyway, we've got a bit of chat for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk a little bit about the bike industry. Got a few guys here at work, certain areas of it, but we might even have a coffee to do that. Believe it or not, lately, Jesse Coyle has stopped for coffees. I know. I, I don't know what's going on either. Sit back, enjoy a little bit of Sydney bike path, and then we'll park up, hey? They're like straight, the arms. They just they don't rest on my head very well. well. They're pretty light. They're the lightest sunglasses around. Twenty eight grand or something. He's good. To, he's good for if you got like a five hour ride. Yeah, because he meets you halfway as well. Yeah. So he's fresh. He adds. He adds new banter. We're talking about you, Aaron. He's um, good. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's like new banter. banter. Yeah. 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 It's new banter. That's why at our. Uh, There's a great thing uh, in, um, in Ireland, at our wedding, you have people who are invited to the afters. And so they're not actually invited to, like, the ceremony. They just come to the party bit. So, like, as everyone's kind of just dipping down, like, pretty much, like, the party people arrive. Yeah. And it's just like, whoop, you go yeah. back up again. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, segue into bikes. Question for you. If you were starting out as a... Wanting to be a cyclist, is it easier or harder now from a recruitment perspective? Yeah, like I still think we're like the whole industry is in the middle of like a bit of a shift into the new technology. Yeah. Even though, yeah, it's been going on for years. Like, you know, there was Hydro Disc Di2 with Shimano like three years ago, and it's still not everyone is on the disc. But it's not going to happen overnight. If you have $6,000 to spend on a bike, yeah. Are you in a better place now than you were 10 years ago? I reckon your budget's better. If you've got 1500 bucks, you're getting a great deal. I reckon the mid-range is all stuffed. Four grand, five grand, six grand is like a, mid, a weird, heavy, not crappy wheels. Yeah. I reckon now that... Because my dad bought that Merida for like 1600 bucks. 105, 11 speed. Yeah. It's like eight kilos probably, rim yeah. brake. Great deal. Yeah. But if you spend four grand, yeah. and so a family friend, a uh, good friend of mine, his mum, she, I service her bike and stuff, and she, her wheels were set up tubeless, and like, it's an Altegra road bike and stuff, and then she had no idea it was set up tubeless, so she put it, she was going up to Brisbane, she put it in her, like, carry bag or into her bike box, took all the air out of the tyres, she puts it in the box, gets there, opens it up and there's like a bit of fluid has leaked everywhere and she's like, what the hell is that? And then she starts pumping it. She's in her hotel room the morning before her ride <laughs> and she can't pump, she can't get it to sleep because she didn't realise it was tubeless. <laughs> so like they're assuming so much knowledge of their customers. Yes. Um, and like she was never she said like she might have not understood at the time, but she, from her recollection she was never told it was she wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. No. There's something here, there's something here to chat about. I'll work it out when I get home. So I want to say that story that I said to you guys as well. This is such cyclist chat. Who, yeah. was, who was your barista? Was it the Italian guy? Yeah. Oh, he's normally the man. Yeah. Fair enough. Where's your, where's your recommended... Yeah, I really want to tell you this story, guys. So I was, I was in at a bike shop the other day and we were, we were sort of talking. I was looking at one of the bikes that was in the stand. It was nice. I'm not going to mention brand names and stuff too much here, but it was a nice bike. 
was kind of looking at it going, geez, it looks like there's a bit of damage around the, around the rear seat stay. And anyway, long story short, I, I found out that the owner of that bike had been sold by a bike shop a set of wide tire, wide, wide new, new styled wheels, let's just say that, okay? Which would therefore run wide tires. So this guy who's just a, you know, he's bought a really nice bike and he's trying to upgrade the wheels and, and of course he, he gets them home, puts his 25 mil tires on and he doesn't really have much of a, a clue. He puts them on, pumps them up and starts riding. Six weeks later, and he has a better look at his bike and realizes that his tires when he pumps them up, of course, don't have any clearance. Rubbing away and he's destroyed the rear caliper of his brake. It kind of had me really thinking a bit about how confusing it is right now for people to go buy bikes. You know, when I started basically riding, your choices were, okay, you probably a Campy or Shimano, kind of a little bit of SRAM at the time, but it wasn't as if there were sort of massive compatibility issues. Like, yeah, the, did Shimano cassettes work with Campy Schmidt? Like, that was kind of your compatibility issues. Now, you got 11 speed, 12 speed, one buys, two buys. Yeah, okay. You're like, okay, things are different, Chris. I get it, that's not a, that's not a big deal. But the reason I'm chatting to you about this, okay, is I'm really commonly asked about opinions on what people should buy. What, like, what bike should you go out and buy? It's easily the biggest thing I get asked. I had one of the guys who got in contact with me about getting into racing, just starting racing, blah, 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 and they just straight out asked me, what is the best bike for me to start racing my bike in Sydney on? And I'm like, I don't know. And not because I don't think there's good bikes out there. I just, it's just like, where do you start? I'm making it more confusing for the whole situation because like I'm sitting here saying, you know, how good's tubeless, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, so easy. And then Lee tells that story about that lady being sold a tubeless and she had no idea and nor should she have. So like, I totally get that. And it's just like, there's so many options. There's so many categories. It's like, what? And in the end, I think it breaks down like this. We're actually relying more on local bike shops than ever. The opinions, the expertise of people that you go into bike shops to see, their opinion matters more than it ever has. It's like I was in getting tires on the van the other week and I've got no idea, no idea. And you know, the, the guys in there could have sold me a complete dud, a complete dud, because they're telling me that I've got to get this tire for that thing. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I don't know, I don't know. And I'm completely reliant on their opinion. And I totally get, I totally get how someone would feel the exact same way going into a bike shop and how you would be if a couple of months later you realized that you'd just been like totally stitched up like that. So help me out here guys. What is, what is the perfect, okay. What is the best bike, best setup to go out and start racing your bike? Okay, you're just getting into it. You're gonna start in C grade. You've been doing some rides with mates on the weekends. You're gonna start racing. What's the best bike? Help me out, because I've got no idea. I've got no idea what to suggest to people anymore. And uh, yeah, I think it's something that maybe the industry's got a little bit carried away with itself on some of this tech. And I really want you to think about maintenance because if you get to like friday afternoon and you've got some sort of problem with your bike and you don't know how to fix it and it's like some little hydraulic fluidy cable-y cord thing and you go into the shop and they say it's going to take two weeks you're like uh i'll play golf do you know what i mean yeah can't lose them to golf we cannot lose these people to golf you you and me that's a failure <laughs> it's a failure in life it's a failure of the vlog if we lose them to golf. Talking to you, Dex. Only other thing I wanted to show you guys before we go this week is some of the footage from that 
crit that I showed in the last vlog, the Southern Cross heart exploding crit that we were doing down there. I had a little bit more of a look back through some of it and what I thought was really noticeable was also just how bad my cadence was. Now I know I've talked to you guys in the past that you know everyone has a natural cadence and that's all absolutely true but there's also something to be said for how to ride with different cadence in certain circumstances and for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of power Cadence does play a role, especially in a situation where you do need to be explosive. So I want to show you a really bad example of that, i.e. me, and we'll go into the video quickly and I'll show you. Firstly, can I just say how awesome this Muzak is that we've got playing? Anyway, this is the race from the weekend and I want you to keep an eye. This is Jesse's camera on that rider there. That's me. And coming down this fast sweeper, we're going to come up the other side and I want to show you how me with a poorly poor cadence here really struggled to get off the mark. So keep your eye on me, keep your eye on me. Slow cadence, slow cadence. I want to speed up now. I want to accelerate now. Just see how sort of slow that was because I was overgeared and a bit slow off the mark. And what might be interesting is if we pull up my camera from that exact same little acceleration and just see how it actually played out from there as well. So coming down the fast sweeper, down the fast sweeper, and I've got pretty good cadence here, you can kind of see up around 100, but if you watch me just drop down a bit here and then go to accelerate, how I was over, look how sort of slow that acceleration is. I'm accelerate. I'm actually putting watts in there and I'm not going anywhere because I'm just grinding them out. I actually go to accelerate again here and I've got a higher cadence and I'm able to actually accelerate. I probably got a 20, RPM higher cadence in that acceleration. I'm actually able to kick off the mark We're just talking about that first second that first split second of acceleration that that higher cadence is really valuable I want to show just one more clip and really this just shows maybe the varied cadence of a lot of the riders around me Okay, and and just see how it sort of plays out So we've got a guy on the far right look at him spinning up a nice high cadence He's able to accelerate quite quickly the guy on his wheel probably a slightly more labored cadence It doesn't seem to be sort of as fast jumping across Leo on the other hand look how quickly he was zipped over onto his wheel because of that high cadence myself Look, I dropped a couple of wheels there, didn't I? Because of a slower, more laboured cadence. The guy in front of me, he was turning over that faster cadence and was able to jump in there quite quickly. And I'm not talking about sort of cadence generally over the ride. I'm just talking about that first little speeding second to be able to spin the gear up and accelerate. And again, that young fellow was able to turn that gear over quickly. And the guy with the, the yellow shoes, who was initially a bit more laboured, you can see he's a little bit more laboured here as well. And I'm actually really enjoying doing these little reviews of the videos because I don't really watch them. We've done a bit of the race footage and stuff in the past, but I haven't actually done it much from a critical assessment, especially self-assessment type thing. I actually think there's something in this for like people riding a bit, like especially at coaches and things, maybe to think about getting video cameras on guys' bikes. You know, AFL, rugby league teams, NFL teams, they all do video re re review analysis stuff. There's a bit in it. Yeah, anyway. I've been talking up this competition and it's totally on me why it hasn't actually been released, announced, it's coming up, it'll be next week, I absolutely promise with you. In the meantime, guys, do keep an eye on our Facebook and Instagram pages. We're really trying to do some giveaways, some caption competitions, really get everyone involved and engaged with, uh, with the team because we're building back up. We really feel like we're building back up now, guys. The truly sad news is that we're almost out of my birthday present, which I will suggest has been no, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. The best gin for gin and tonic I've ever drunk. Wow. Yeah. For gin and tonic. Now, I should stress that. We are not purest gin drinkers. Like, proper gin drinkers will think we are not legit because we, we mix. But uh, for gin and tonic, can't beat that. Peace.
Trump, baby. Go to the cap. <laughs>